Hey guys, this is going to be a different bit of a different video today. Um, I wanted to show you a little, you know, neat trick or something like that uh, on old cars with the cassettes and in particular the cassette adapters here. So if you drive, you know, old cars like me, uh, particularly the 70s, 80s, and into the 90s models, you might notice that if it's an upper class model, it might have a cassette deck on there or a tape deck. And most people don't understand the potential. A lot of people don't even know what a tape deck is at this point, which is kind of sad if you think about it. But basically, most people see it. They'll be, oh, just I'll just put a you know tacky Bluetooth radio in there. But then you got to mess with all the wiring and all that crap, and it might even not even you know work right once you get to the point, depending on the car. So me personally, I prefer cassette tapes. I don't like CDs, I don't like Bluetooth, I don't like, you know, any of that fancy new stuff. I only like tape decks because they're simple, they work right, and they work well. But, you know, the reason I don't like CDs is because you can't really pick your music. You have to buy the CD, which I find can be really annoying. Because then if I only like one song off an album, I have to have the whole album playing just to get the one song. It's obnoxious. So the cheap and easy way to do that is to buy one of these. This is a cassette tape adapter. Um, it's got a auxiliary cord. They make Bluetooth ones, but I don't like Bluetooth, so I didn't buy one. They're about ten dollars. I got this on eBay. Um, you can you used to be able to buy them in Walmart, but I'm not sure they sell them in the stores anymore. Uh, this is a special one where you can actually move the cord here to the outside of the the tape, so it'll it's compatible with the General Motors horizontal uh, tape deck that goes in like this instead of like this, like a traditional one. So that's good to have, but the issue now with these tape decks is on a fancier system that has auto reverse. The tape will not, the uh, tape adapter will not work with an auto reverse system, and the reason for that is there are two gears inside here that simulate tape movement. If I turn this with my finger, I don't know if you can see that, but that will move in there. And what that does is it tricks the car into thinking there's a tape in the system. So when these spin, the tape system on the car reads this head right here. And it reads the signal coming out of this, which is going to be hooked up to your iPod or phone or whatever. And that's how it works. The issue with that is that on newer systems, on cassette decks, there is an auto-reverse feature. So if it's a cassette in there... In the olden days, you'd stick your cassette in, it would play through the eight songs or whatever, and when it was done, it would spit the tape out because it was done. So you'd take, take the tape out of the deck, flip it over, put it back in, and then it would play the second, it would play, you know, play it backwards, and it would play the second side of the tape. That's how it works. These don't need to do that because it's just a head hooked up to an auxiliary cable. But it still has the gear that controls the auto reverse function. So what'll happen is some cars that have digital auto reverse, like a Mercury I used to have, um, it'll flip the tape digitally, so your resistance on the uh, your feedback on the speakers will be higher, and you won't be able to hear the music. Or on newer vehicles like my Lincoln, is it will stop it, digitally flip it, which will make a little kerchunk noise, and then it'll start playing the tape again at a lower volume. And once it realizes that, it flips it back, and then it will do it again and again and again. It, for basically eternity. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to take out that gear there so that that doesn't happen. And all you need is a simple screwdriver like this. This is a small Phillips screwdriver. I have it for fixing my glasses when they break. And there's going to be two screws right here and four screws on the outsides. So I'm going to do that quick. Alright, once you got all your Phillips screws out, you just simply take the face off the cassette deck, it just cracks open like that. And you want to make sure you're doing it with the right side up so all your gears don't go everywhere like mine just did. But I'll show you how to put it all back together in case you can't figure it out. It's being held together by something else here. Just a moment. Okay, so once you have the face off of the adapter, this is what you're going to see. There's going to be four or five gears in here. There's the tape simulation gears, which is these boys right here, and that moves like that, and if it falls off like that, all you need to do 
is take it and put it back on. There's a, like little holes. Get my screwdriver here. There's little holes on this right there on three points of it there and there that you just set it on top and once you put the, the head back on it'll or the top back on it'll hold everything together. So some tapes you can take this gear out right here. That stops it from moving in simulation with one another and it won't reverse that way because that way these things are no longer connected to one another when they are turning. See that? Turns like that. But some cars don't like that because then it doesn't realize that there is a cassette in the, in the adapter or in the, in the slot and it spits it back out because it thinks you just put something in that's not supposed to be in there. So the other thing that you can take out is this gear here. This is the reverse gear. It's got this little rubber band on it. So when the tape thinks it's done, it pushes a little thing here, pushes a little tab, and pushes this back like that, preventing these gears from moving in one direction. It Like that. See that? It'll stop it. So it'll stop moving, flip the ta tape, go all the way back, and then that'll push that black band gear there back to the point it was originally at to which the car will hit it again with the auto reverse and it'll start the cycle again it'll catch if it's in there right it'll catch and it'll get stuck just like that so some cars you can take that out and it works when I did that on my Lincoln however it also didn't realize there was a tape in the deck because this piece has to be here so the digital prong here can read that there's a tape in the deck so what I did is I took this gear out right here, this secondary one. That seems to be the way to fix all of these, no matter what kind of tape deck you've got, no matter what kind of car you've got, aftermarket, doesn't matter. This gear right here, if that's not here, these gears can spin freely, no matter what, and this gear can remain in the same spot. So that they, the tape deck uh, can move this back and forth as many times as it wants, and it's not going to do anything to impact the main three gears here. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Basically, you just grab onto it with your fingers or needle nose pliers and take it out. So now I'm going to do that. As you can see, I've got the gear out sitting right there. Camera would focus. There we go. <clears throat> now I'm going to put it all back together. But before I do that, I'm going to adjust this cord here to stick out of this slot right here instead of this slot over here. That way, when I put my tape deck in, the cord won't get pinched by the side of the tape uh, slot, and the adapter will be able to play freely. Alright, now once you've got all your screws back in your tape deck, or your tape, make sure everything works right. Move these back and forth just like that. As you can see, it still moves. Make sure that reverse gear isn't pinched on anything and it still comes down, which it does. So that's good. And then the next step is to just stick it in the car and give her a whirl. Unfortunately, I'm using my phone to record this, so I can't uh, plug it in and try to play music off it at the same time. But I will update in the description if it worked. Um, if it didn't, I will tell you which gear it was that I had to remove to do it. But typically, it's really going to depend on your car. So if I had to re remove this gear and it doesn't work for your car, well, unless you're driving a 1983 Oldsmobile 98 Regency or any car similar to that, it might not work for your car. You might have to take out the main gear. You might have to take out the reverse gear. You might even have to take out all three of these uh, tail gears here, um, which I had to do on another one of my vehicles that I had. Take out all three of them, so just these are in here. You just kind of got to mess around with it a little bit and find out what works for you. But with that being said, now you know a little bit more, maybe, about how cassette adapters work. And uh, you can go ahead and keep that old crusty tape deck in your car instead of going and getting yourself a tacky Bluetooth radio that doesn't always work right. So, hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Bye.